What's up guys? I've been playing Elite Dangerous for the last few weeks trying to get a full understanding of what this game is. What type of game is it? What does it have to offer after the honeymoon phase of being in a one-to-one -one scale open world galaxy based on the real Milky Way? And let me tell you, the honeymoon phase is real. You know, if I had just, you know, a thousand dollars just chilling in the bank, I might build me my own cockpit surround sound with some Oculus riff on. You know, come on, son. Mm, dreams. This game is hard to explain. Think Daisy in space. But take away the many closet serial killers that like to murder new players without any consequences. This game doesn't incentivize that. Before you start, there are a few tutorials you can take on the basics, which I highly recommend you do. You don't want your first experience to be smashing into a space station. Other than that, you're just shoved out into the world without any guidance. No story missions to follow, just open space. I loved it, but this is one of the reasons why I say this game isn't for everyone. When I started playing this, I was terrible. I had trouble traveling, I had trouble landing my ship. Let's not rush into things now. Let's take our time right here. Oh, oh I'm going to land it. I'm going to land it like no one has ever done before. And I couldn't figure out where to land in these huge space stations. Is it over here? Is it over here? Over here? And then my friend pointed out like, oh, yo, just look at your mini map. Oh, some players might not like this experience being tossed into the wilds to fend for yourself. You don't know where to go, what to do. You just have to kind of figure it out by yourself. And over the past two weeks, I started to learn how to play the game. I learned how to fly my ship by adjusting the throttle pin until it turns blue so I could turn faster. Or like targeting certain parts of a ship I was fighting like destroying the FTL drive so they can't run away. The experience of becoming a better pilot was a pure joy to me. It's an achievement just getting the hang of landing and taking off from a station. And you're gonna have to learn it without destroying your ship in the process. This is where you repair and reload your weapons. And depending on what you wanna do in Elite, you're gonna be doing this quite often. As of right now, you can trade, bounty hunt, or just explore the Milky Way, which will take years. That's pretty much it, which is why people are dissatisfied with the product. That and Elite is online only, but you can play solo or with a private group of friends, which actually works really well. Now there are many factors that come with trading, hunting, and exploring. You can pick up constantly changing missions from each station, you can search in unidentified signals, you can follow the story between the three factions of the game, you can even pick up mining. One time I grouped up with a couple friends and started bounty hunting near an asteroid belt. Another time I traded in my shield generator for an extra cargo rack to hold more cargo on trade runs. And even that's not that simple. Sometimes on trade runs you get interdicted by a pirate or a very annoying federal ship. Which brings me to my next point. I hate the NPCs in this game. For example, if you're fighting to collect a bounty, sometimes the NPC ship will fly in front of you while you're shooting. This is bad because if you shoot someone, you automatically become wanted. This is when the police, which in my case are the federal ships, will proceed to try to kill you. Yes, the death penalty is for everything in this game. If you try to enter a space station without their permission, they will try to kill you. If you can't park your ship within 10 minutes, they will try to kill you. If you are blocking a launch pad, they will try to kill you. If you get a fine and you forget to pay it off, they will try to kill you. It's like if a cop looked up your license plate, saw that you ran a red light, proceeded to take out his rocket launcher to explode your vehicle with you still inside. Another thing is a lack of options. In terms of progression, you have to gain millions of credits to upgrade to bigger ships. In that ship, you can upgrade tons of different weapons and change configurations. The problem is that there isn't many ways to get credits. You have bounty hunting and then trading. And in terms of efficiency, trading gets you that straight cash, homie. There needs to be multiple ways to progress in the game, and I'm pretty sure they're working on a lot of it already. And the problem is, is that we don't have it right now because this is a full game. This isn't early access. This isn't green light. Other than that, I really, really enjoyed Elite Dangerous. I mean, I got lost for 
hours just from exploring. This hasn't really gotten old or boring to me. I guess I'm one of those sim players now, and this is a space sim. And does Elite achieve the feeling of flying a real spacecraft? Yes, it does. From the sound design to how the ships feel when you're flying through space and you have to hit super crews and then slowly jump out into a space station. It's, it's great. So great that I wanted to improve my setup. So this is my journey of getting into space sims on a budget. For controls, it's a matter of personal preference. I didn't like mouse and keyboard, so I settled with the 360 controller, which worked very well. But I decided to do a little research on, you know, joysticks and hotasses. Hotasses? Is that how I say that? Hotas. I before I was saying hot now if you didn't know ever since elite came out the hype train for space sims in general have reached unicorn levels anyways because of this hype level all the hotasses are gone sold out well at least the cheap ones anyway but long story short I bought me a thrustmaster t 16,000 m joystick so no hotas for me which actually stands for hands on throttle and stick so I just got the joystick so it's only hands on stick Moving on. I got this stick because it had the same technology as the Full Metal Thrustmaster Warthog. Man, it's expensive. My hope is that because Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen is creating a market for good quality, decently priced hotasses, that other companies will see this and start making better products. Because there isn't much of a selection here. Another thing I got roped into is head tracking, which allows the game to track your head movements just like an Oculus Rift. First, I tried Open Track, which uses your phone to track where your head is, which works surprisingly well, but I didn't want to balance my phone on my head and didn't want to worry about battery life either. Second, I tried Free Track No IR, which uses only your camera. Now, both of these are free software, so it's not going to work 100%. You're going to get your free value here. It's going to be passable. For this one, the tracking went all over the place and it took me right out of the experience. Depending on your camera, though, you might get better results. There's also another way you can get tracking that you can build yourself, but I haven't tried it yet. If you like Space Sims, Elite might have this effect on you. Just just let the feeling pass. Let it, let it pass through. Because you might end up homeless. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what Elite Dangerous is as of January 13, 2015. And I'll see you later, Space Cowboy. <laughs>